Hello everyone uh, and welcome. This is going to be a quick tutorial on how to bring your models from Maya LT over to Substance Painter. We're going to paint up the model and then we're going to send it back to Maya LT and prepare it for exportation into Stingray. So before we send our model over to Substance Painter, what we're going to need to do is just make sure that all of our UVs are set up properly and that our materials are set up properly as well. So right now I have uh, this model and the model is already basically completed. Uh, I have a UV layout. So if I were to select my UV tool and select my model, we can see that I've got my UVs already laid out and they're pretty much ready to go. Okay. So once I have that completed, all I really need to do is put the proper material on here. Okay, so the material we're going to want to put on is a PBS shader material. Okay, and this is found if you go to your uh, shading panel, there will be this PBS material. I've added it to my own custom tab, but you can find it in the shading uh, tab over here. So just go ahead and select that PBS shader in which case it will go ahead and put the PBS shader on your model. Now this is already setting it up for using shader effects and now this model is basically ready to be sent over to Stingray. We're going to do a couple extra steps to make sure that the materials go over perfectly and that we don't have to do any extra work on the Stingray side. And we're going to do that with the shader effects tool built into Maya LT. Okay, so what we're going to do now is just select our model and we're going to go to uh, center the pivot and we're going to freeze transformations and we're going to clear the history. When we do so, we're going to see that we have only three tabs up here. Okay. Now the, the first tab is our model name. So we're going to go ahead and name that properly because it's always good to do. So I'm going to call this gong and actually I'm going to make sure it's all lowercase gong and I'm going to go ahead and grab the material and set this to gong underscore mat for material. Okay, so that's gong underscore material. Once we have that completed, we're pretty much set to go. Now we can open up the shader effects tab and in here we can actually create our own graph relative to how we're going to want to see it in engine. Okay, so this is actually what the engine sees as to how the shader graph is going to be built. Now, if you just leave it alone and don't do anything, you can do that and that's fine. This is already set up using the standard shader material of Stingray. So we have our color map, we have our normal map, we have metallic map, roughness, etc. Right? We have all the same things as we would find in Stingray right here. So if you're going to use the standard material, that's perfect. You're set to go. All you have to do is select your maps and pretty much you're done. Okay. You can, you know, say whether or not you want to use the color or the metallic or however you want to do it. But this is exactly the same shader as what you would find in Stingray. So this is already done effectively, less the, less the material work, right? We haven't actually done any textures, but the material itself is pretty much set up and ready to bring over to Stingray. If we were to apply our maps, export the model and bring it into Stingray, we're done, right? Like it's going to do it all perfectly. However, we're going to take it one step further because I like to use something called an RMA material. And an RMA material basically maps the roughness, the metallic, and the ambient occlusion into one map since they're all grayscale. Okay, so I'm going to take it one step further and we're going to kind of learn a little bit of a better process as to how to make this just right, uh, especially if you're trying to make an optimized shader. So we're going to optimize this shader and we're going to go ahead and get that set up. Okay, so the first thing we're going to want to do is go ahead and hit this make unique button. Okay, so once we hit make unique, it is now its own custom material that we can edit and work with on our own. Okay, so now once we've set that make unique button, we can hit this open shader effects. And what we're going to basically do is delete everything in here. And we're just going to start from scratch. Okay, so I'm just going to select them all. And I'm going to delete them. And I'm going to go in here. And the only one that I really want to keep is this text chord zero. And I could even delete that. That's really not the end of the world, but I'm going to leave it for now because I do need it. Okay. So there we go. So now all that I've got is the texture coordinate and our standard base. Okay. So that's really all we're going to technically need to get started. Okay. Now I'm going to maximize it and move this over. So I have a little more space to work. And now just like in Stingray, we can go ahead and add all the nodes that we need just by right clicking. So if we go right click, add, we can go ahead and grab our sampling and say sample texture. And we're going to actually need 
four of these. So we're going to go right click, add sampling, sample texture, right click, add sampling, sample texture, and right click, add sampling, sample texture. Okay, so now we've got our four samples. Okay, and what these are going to relate to is our color map, our normal map, our RMA material, and our emissive channel. Now, let's go ahead and rename these guys. Now, one thing that's a little confusing is when you have this window open, you want to be able to see what you're actually editing. So what I usually do is I hit this uh, kind of you know panel button and I try to get this set up so that I can see everything that I'm going to need because right here is where the actual editing is done. So I want to be able to see that as well. So I'm going to drag this out just so that I can see both this in a large view, so I have a nice, clean, easy to look at view here, as well as the properties on the right, okay? So once I've done that, I can now select this and I can change its name. So I'm gonna call this color. I'm gonna call this normal. I'm gonna call this RMA, RMA. And I'm gonna call this emissive. Okay, once we have our textures created or our samples created, what we can do now is we can start bringing across our RG to the UV. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and do that for all four of these. And then our RGBA, we can actually bring to the base color. So this is just going to be bringing over the RGB color channel. Okay, we don't really want this A. I mean, we could bring across the A and put that into opacity. In fact, let's do that. And But you'll, you'll notice that when we do so, these are coming across as .xyz and .x. Now, we don't really want that. We want this to be RGB and we want this to be A. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and select our base color, just the little input right there. And now you can change the swizzle. Okay, so we're going to go RGB. And that'll go ahead, and I'm just going to move this over to my other screen so it doesn't keep popping up. And I'm going to grab this one, and I'm going to change this opacity to the component swizzle of A. So now we're bringing over the alpha channel, okay? So now we're bringing over the red, green, blue channels to the base color, and we're bringing over the alpha channel to the opacity, okay? Now, with our normal map, we're only going to be using the RGBA channels. I mean the RGB channels. So let's go ahead and bring that over to our normal and let's select our normal and let's set our component swizzle to RGB and let's move down to our RMA. Now our RMA is going to be a little different because again this is going to mean uh, roughness, metallic, and ambient. That's what the RMA stands for and again that's just something that I'm making up. Okay so RMA is roughness, metallic, ambient. And I do that in this order so that I kind of remember what those relate to. So R is going to be R, metallic or roughness is going to be the red channel, metallic is going to be the green channel, and then alpha is going to be the blue channel. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. So let's bring over our roughness and we can select the input and say in the components whistle that this is going to be our R channel. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and bring the metallic across and we're going to select that and set the swizzle to the green channel. Okay, and now what we're going to do is grab the last one and bring that over to ambient occlusion and then we're going to select the input and make this the B channel. Okay, so now we can see that the red channel is being, I'm sorry, the red channel is being mapped to the roughness. We're taking the green channel and mapping it to the metallic, and we're taking the blue channel and mapping it to the ambient occlusion, okay? So when we come out of Substance Painter, we're going to have an RMA you know, texture that's going to be all three of those files. It's going to be the roughness, the metallic, and the ambient occlusion all bound into one map, okay? And this is really efficient, okay, because it will not use three separate RGB channels for one map, okay? So normally if you were to do this, right, and we did it the traditional way, we would have a roughness map and that would have red, green, and blue describing a black and white map 
which would be, then be mapped to your roughness channel, right? So that's a lot of waste. This is a much more efficient way to handle it because we're taking each of the channels of this map and applying a grayscale map to it, okay? And if this is a little confusing, it's understandable. I didn't fully understand it when I first got started either, but I promise you by the end of this tutorial, it'll all make sense, okay? So without further ado, let's keep moving on and let's grab our emissive channel. Now, one thing about emissive is in the engine, it's really nice to be able to control it. Okay, so if we were to just go ahead and bring this over to our emissive channel and set our emissive channel to RGB, oops, RGB, this would work perfectly fine. However, sometimes you want to be able to overdrive it and sometimes you want to be able to underdrive it, right? Let's say we don't really want to have to control all this just through the map, okay? Because emissives can be very challenging to get just right. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna make a little bit of a fine-tuned control system inside of here, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna add and we're gonna go math and we're gonna go multiply. And now we have a multiplier and we're gonna drag this RGB to that top value, okay? And we're gonna actually delete this old line that we don't need anymore. So let's go ahead and get rid of that. Oh, there we go. So I'm gonna select it and I'm gonna delete it. Now, I'm gonna bring the result from here into this emissive, but we can't do that yet, because as you can see, it'll say we have this invalid connection. Don't worry though, that's just because what's happening is we only have one of the values supplied. We need to supply both values. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and go right click, add, input, and material variable, okay? Now what this material variable will allow us to do is set a specific value that we would like. And we're going to set this value to a scalar value. So if you select it, you can see over here that we have this type, okay? So what we want to do is select scalar. You could do it as vector 2, vector 3, vector 4, but all we need is a scalar value for this operation. So let's go ahead and select scalar. And what we're going to do is attach that to this bottom node, okay? And this top node, we want to make sure that this is set to RGB. Okay, so again, in our component swizzle, we're gonna go RGB, and that'll allow us to multiply whatever value we have in here times each of these channels. So if you do a scalar times a vector three, what'll happen is, let's say this was set to, I don't know, zero, like it is, right? It'll be zero times the whatever is set in the R channel, zero times whatever is set in the G channel, and zero times whatever is set in the B channel. So effectively what we're doing is ramping up each of the values which will be perfect for what we're trying to do. We just wanna increase the brightness. So by just increasing each of those numbers, we're doing it proportionally and making sure that all of the channels are coming up at the same time. So by using a scalar value, it works really, really well here, okay? So now what we need to do is take our result and plug that into our emissive. So there we have that. Now, now the only thing we still have to do is make sure that each of the channels are gonna be read properly, okay? So let's go ahead and select our standard base and let's set our normals to tangent space because how it's gonna come out of uh, Substance Painter is going to be in tangent space. So we wanna make sure that our output is also in tangent space. Now we can go ahead and select our normal. And in here, we're gonna just wanna make sure that our encoding is set to normal map, okay? And under our RMA, because we're gonna be exporting linear based uh, grayscale maps that are gonna be bound into one map, we're gonna to wanna to make sure that these are also set to linear space. So here we wanna make sure that the, the encoding is set to linear color, okay? Once that's complete, we're pretty much set to go. Um, there is one last thing, and I've just noticed that I have these R, G, and B in capital letters. However, this standard base is gonna be uh, case sensitive. So what we're gonna wanna do is make sure that these are all set to the proper lowercase settings, okay? So let's grab our metallic, and let's make that a lowercase g. Let's grab our roughness and make sure that that's our lowercase r. And let's grab our uh, ambient occlusion, and let's make sure that that's a lowercase b, okay? So now that all of our maps are properly set up and everything is input correctly, we can go ahead and export this graph for later use. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's go File, Export Graph, 
And let's go into the Stingray PBS. And as you can see, I already have one that was called RMA EM, but since we're adding the A, I'm gonna go ahead and create a new one. So this one's gonna be RMA underscore EM underscore A. And the reason that I do that is because this signifies what type of a shader I'm allowing myself. So as we can see, we've got the RMA, we've got an emissive channel for the EM. So RMA is RMA, EM is the emissive, but because we're gonna have this alpha channel being used now, we're gonna go ahead and say underscore A, okay? And we can go ahead and hit save. Now, again, this alpha channel is optional. You don't have to use the alpha channel. You could delete this alpha channel and go ahead and export as an RMA EM. Either which way, once you have it exported, you can always re-import and use it again. So what's really nice about this, this uh, method is that now we can go ahead and go file import and I'll go ahead and grab my old EM shader just for example and here we can see that I don't have the alpha but I just imported it so that's all it took me to to get this going if I wanted to switch over to the other graph that I created I can go import graph and I can grab back to my RMA EMA okay so as you can see this is now basically eternally served uh, this is now basically you know, stored within Maya. So this graph I can utilize at any time on any model, okay? So anytime I wanna use this, all I have to do is go you know, open up the shader effects, go file, import graph, and select the, the, the shader that I've created. And as you can see, I, I have this EM that I created a long time ago, and it's still available. So once you've created it, you've got it, and then you can just utilize it over and over and over again, and you don't have to recreate all these steps, okay? So this becomes a lot easier the next time through, because all you're going to do is just, you know, go to your shader, shader effects and import the graph, and you're pretty much ready to rock, okay? Anyhow, um, now that we're all done in here, we can go ahead and close this window. So let's go ahead and close the window. And we're gonna notice that this whole model has now turned invisible. Now, the reason that it's turned invisible is because we have an alpha channel, but we don't have any materials applied, as you can see here. So, so here are all of our materials, right? We have our normal that we created, we have our color map that we created, our RMA, and our emissive. However, there's nothing applied to them yet. So now we've got to go into Substance Painter and create our textures, and then we'll have something to fill into these slots. Um, and I'm going to show you in Substance Painter exactly how we're going to create all these maps uh, so that they feed in perfectly to our uh, Maya LT. All right, so uh, let's jump over to Substance Painter. Um, so let's go ahead and export our model. So I'm going to go File, Export Selection. And I'm going to go ahead and find my gong folder and I'm going to go into my game ready folder and I'm going to I kind of already exported it once but I'm going to export it again over to gong.fbx so export selection and yes okay so now we are done in Maya LT for the moment and we're going to jump into substance painter so let's go ahead and launch substance painter by going to the start menu and launching substance painter inside of substance painter all we have to do is go file new we're going to leave this as pretty much default with the OpenGL, and we're going to select our mesh so i'm going to grab this gong.fbx and say open okay and here we are in substance painter uh pretty much ready to go with our model all right so what we're going to do now is i'm going to go ahead and texture this guy up and once i'm done texturing I'm going to uh, show you how to set up the outputs, okay? Because the texturing part of this tutorial, I mean, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna do all the texturing, uh, not on screen, because um, that's a whole nother job for a whole nother time, okay? So, uh, so yeah, so I'm gonna come back in a moment, and this is gonna be all textured up, and I'm gonna show you how to prep for export, okay? So here we go. Okay, now that my textures are all complete, um, I've got my gong kind of painted up here and I'm all, all, all set to go. And now I want to uh, export my textures so that I can use them in the material that we just set up in Maya LT. Okay, so uh, you're going to need to know how to set up the actual exporter from Substance Painter. And let's get into that now. Okay, so let's go File, Export Textures. 
And inside of here, we can go into the configuration tab and configure the way we want this to work. Okay. So as you can see, there's a whole bunch of presets and we're actually going to be working from this PBR metal roughness to start. So let's select that PBR metal roughness and let's go ahead and duplicate it. Okay. So now that it's duplicated, we're just going to rename it and we're going to name it RMA underscore EM underscore A, just like we did in Maya LT. So now this is now setting up with a whole bunch of mappings that are related to channels of different maps. Okay. I know that seems a little confusing, but it won't be for very long. So as we can see, we have a base color, which is going to apply to our color map. We have a roughness channel, a metallic channel, and a height channel. Now these we don't really need. So let's go ahead and get rid of those. So let's get rid of the roughness. Let's get rid of the metallic and let's get rid of the height. Okay. And that leaves us basically with three maps and one that we still need. We still need our RMA. Okay. So we have the base color. We need that. We have the normal map. We need that. And we have the emissive channel, which we also need. Okay. So all we have to do now is create the last channel. So let's go ahead and click this R plus G plus B. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and click that. And once we do, we're going to see that we have this new input dialog down here. Okay. So, but we definitely want to have it, you know, keep our naming convention. Okay. So if we grab this dollar sign mesh dollar sign texture set, that is going to keep the, um, that's going to keep our naming conventions the same as what's above. So again, I'm just going to select that and I'm going to go copy and then I'm going to paste it into this line. Okay. And then at the end of that underscore, I'm just going to type RMA. Okay. For the, you know, the RMA material. Okay. So now that that's created, all we have to do is apply which go to which channels. Okay. So as you can see, we have a red channel, a green channel, and a blue channel. And as we know, we want to apply roughness to the red channel, metallic to the green channel, and ambient occlusion to the blue channel. Okay. So let's go ahead and do that. So let's grab our roughness and drag it into the red channel. Okay. And we're going to select the gray channel because this is a gray channel. Okay. Then we're going to go ahead and grab our metallic and do the same thing. So I'm going to go to the green and I'm going to drop it on there and I'm going to select the gray channel. And then the last one is the ambient occlusion. And I'm going to put that on the blue channel and I'm going to go gray. Okay. So now that that's done, we're, we're finished. Okay. So we can go ahead and go to our export, select the configuration file that we want to use, which is going to be our RMA EMA. And we can just select the folder we want to export to. So let's go ahead and jump to our game ready folder. So gong game ready. And I've created another folder called materials. And I'm going to go into that materials folder and say, select folder. Now, all I have to do is hit the export button and the maps are going to be exported exactly as I would want them to be. Okay. So I'm going to hit okay. And now I'm ready to go back to Maya LT. So let's jump over to Maya LT and select the model that's invisible. And we're going to go ahead and start filling in these maps. Okay. So let's grab our color map first. Game ready, materials, and we're going to grab our base color. Okay, so select. And as you can see, it's now black, right? So it's now applied the, the material, so it's not got an empty alpha channel. Okay, so let's go ahead and grab our normal. And lastly, we're going to grab our RMA. Okay. Now, one thing to note, we have this emissive channel, but we're not filling it with anything. And that's going to be okay because it's just going to fill it with black. Uh, I kind of gave you this emissive channel so that if you do have emissive properties, you can utilize them. Um, and just so you're aware, this material variable will adjust this emissive. In fact, let's do one last thing inside of our shader graph by uh, making that a proper name because I, I forgot to name it. So let's go ahead and go open shader graph. Let's grab this material variable and where it says name, let's just make that emissive adjust.
Okay, so now you've got the adjustment for that emissive channel. So if you want to ramp it up or ramp it down, you can. All right, uh, one thing you might want to do is also adjust this min and max number. So here we have the UI slider min, so zero will make it you know, not emissive. Uh, but we, we might want to overdrive it. One will only allow us to go to whatever the map is set to. So if we want to go higher or overdrive the map, we're going to want to create a higher number. So let's go ahead and make this something like 50. So we can really overdrive that emissive quality should we have an emissive channel and want to use it. Okay, so that's really it. Okay, this is just an option um, again, so you can you know, have an emissive channel should you want it. It's like the alpha, we're not really using the alpha channel either for this current model, uh, but it's nice to have it so that you can use it should you want to, all right? And I wanted to show you the full, you know, a full proper shader uh, rather than just a, a, a stripped down one, okay? So, um, so now that we've done that, let's go ahead and go file, export graph, and let's just make sure we overwrite our original RMA EMA uh, shader so that uh, it now has the proper emissive adjust and the proper values for uh, the min and the max, okay? So once we've done that, now we'll be able to see that when we select our model and select on the material, this is now called emissive adjust, and we can adjust that emissive quality however we'd like, okay? Um, again, we don't have an emissive channel, so we're not really gonna use it, but you know, it's there if you do have an emissive channel in your model and your material, okay? so. That's pretty much it for Maya LT. This is now pretty much uh, you know set to go. So let's go ahead and save our model. So save scene, and let's go ahead and export this again uh, for uh, Stingray. Okay, so I'm going to go File, Export Selection, and I'm going to go to the Gong FPX, and I'm going to overwrite it again. All right. So now we are ready for Stingray. So let's jump into Stingray. And inside of Stingray, I'm just going to go ahead and create a new project. So I'll create one from the basic template, and I'm going to call this, uh, I don't know, material test. And I will you know, create this on my desktop, new folder, and I'm going to call this uh, material test. Select the folder and create. And once the project is live, I'm just going to navigate to content, models, and I'm going to go ahead and create a new folder for my gong. So create folder, and I'm going to call this gong. Once created, I'm going to go into the gong folder and I'm going to go import. And now I can just navigate to my jobs folder gong, game ready, and select the gong.fbx. Hit import. And you will see that the gong is imported complete with materials. And we had to do no extra effort to make that happen. It is 100% ready to go out of Maya LT. So that is the process that I use for, um, for using Substance Painter. But if you're a Substance Designer user, you might still be a little bit in the dark. <clears throat> now, most of this is gonna carry over identically, okay? Uh, we're gonna do almost everything exactly the same out of Substance Designer, uh, albeit except for a, a few different things, and that is in the way that we're gonna export our uh, materials from Substance Designer. So let's go ahead and um, kind of continue on this with Substance Designer. I'm just going to make a floor uh, that's going to be like a repeating pattern that I'll, I'll make in Substance Designer and we'll go ahead and see what the process is for that, okay? Okay, so back in Maya LT, let's go ahead and uh, create a floor, all right? So we're just going to go polygons and we're going to create a plane and I'm just gonna scale that plane up nicely so that it fits nicely underneath my gong. Okay, so something like that should be fine. I will uh, adjust the plane so that it doesn't have so many parts. Uh, not that any of this really matters, but I just don't really need that many subdivisions. So I'm just gonna get rid of my subdivisions. And now I've just got a simple plane 
uh, and it's ready to go. Let's just check the UVs, and I'm pretty sure that the plane just lays out perfectly. Yep, as you can see, it's taking up the zero to one space entirely. Uh, so this, this model doesn't really require much because let's face it, it's just a plane. Um, but yeah, so now our plane is created. The only thing we really have to do is apply our shader that's gonna be correct. So let's go uh, to the shading and let's add our PBS shader to it. And let's select the model and go to the Stingray PBS uh, over here. And actually, let's go ahead and name all this properly. So the P plane, I'm now going to name uh, Gong underscore floor. And let's grab this uh, Stingray PBS and let's call that uh, Gong underscore floor underscore mat for the material. And let's uh, just do one last thing, which I always like to do, and that is to clear uh, center the pivot, freeze the transformations, and clear the history. Okay, so now that that's all done, uh, we should have just the gong floor, the gong floor shape, and the gong, gong floor material. Okay, so that's all set to go. So now what we have to do is apply our shader effects graph. So let's open up the shader effects, and let's go file, import graph, and let's grab our RMA EMA shader that we created and let's close the shader effects panel and you'll see that it went invisible again. Okay, and again, the reason that it's invisible is because we do not have an alpha map being applied by the, uh, the color map, all right? So this is acting as expected. So uh, all we have to do now is just basically export our, uh, our model. So file, export selection, and I'm gonna call this gong underscore floor. Okay, once it's exported, we can go into Substance Designer. So let's go start and jump into Substance Designer. Okay, so here in Substance Designer, uh, let's go ahead and um, get ourselves set up. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna wanna do is go File, New Substance, and we're just gonna name our substance something like uh, gong underscore floor. Okay, and I'm just using the physically based standard, um, you know, uh, preset. Okay, so I'm just going to hit OK, and that's going to go ahead and create our base graph. Okay, which has nothing really in it yet. Okay, that's going to give us our base color, our normal map, our roughness map, and our metallic map. Okay, so the first thing we're going to want to do is add one for ambient occlusion. So let's go ahead and go add node, output, and ambient occlusion. Okay, so we can just name that A O. All right, so that is what you would normally have if you were going directly into Stingray and you were just using the uh, the traditional shader without using the RMA shader that we created. Okay, so this would be the outputs that you would need for that um, for that setup. So let's actually start building out a, a, a shader graph. Okay, so let's go ahead and grab our tie. I'm gonna I'm gonna use this uh, kind of preset tiles, and I'm gonna grab this tiles 02, and uh, just plop that onto the, onto the shader graph. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna add the node transformation 2D, and I'm just gonna apply the base color to get my scaling correct, okay? So once I do this, I'm just gonna go geometry, and I'm gonna change this over to plane, okay? So now it's more like what our model is gonna be. And if we want to import the model, we can. In fact, maybe we should, okay? But one thing to note is that when you export from Maya LT, the uh, FBX file is going to be too new uh, of a version for Substance Designer to work with, okay? So we're going to have to get set up one more time for that to happen. So let's jump back over to Maya LT. And when we export it this time, so we're just going to go File, Export Selection, and we're gonna go ahead and do the same thing, go to gong underscore floor. But here what we're gonna have to do is just downgrade this FBX version, okay? So over here under FBX file format, we're gonna wanna downgrade that to 2013, okay? And hit export selection. Hit yes. And now inside of Substance Designer, we can go ahead and I'm just gonna set this back to cubes so that we see that it changes. Um, and I'm gonna jump into the folder I'm going to grab my gong floor and I'm just going to plop that into the viewport. And as you can see, now we will see it. 
Uh, if we had done it before, it would have just been invisible. It wouldn't have worked. Okay, so you have to make sure that that um, file is correct. Now, once we've done that though, we can go ahead and go right click and we can say view outputs in 3D view. Okay, and now we're getting a 3D view with using the model that we've got. But as we can see, this material is just way too big, right? So we're going to want to make that a little bit smaller. So I've just uh, put this um, transformation 2D here, and I'm just going to scale this down to the point where it feels about right. Okay, so that's going to feel probably a little too small, maybe a little bit bigger. Um, I'm not really concerned too much with the look. I'm really just showing you this for process. Uh, but yeah, okay, so... There we've got the proper scale. So let's go ahead and copy this and paste it. And I've pasted it four times. One, two, three, four, okay? And once I do that, uh, now I just wanna break all these connections, okay? So I'm just gonna break these connections and I'm gonna put the normal to the normal. I'm gonna go the roughness to the roughness, the metallic to the metallic, and the ambient occlusion to the ambient occlusion. So now each of these outputs are going to be, uh, you know, correct and all in the same uh, scale. Okay, so as we can see, it's displaying just as we wanted it, okay? So let's just say that this was perfect and we're just gonna accept this as is. Um, when we go to export our materials, right? Like if we were to go to export outputs, we're gonna see that we only have base color, normal, roughness, metallic, and AO, but we don't have an RMA. Okay, so let's cancel that and let's go ahead and create an RMA. So we're gonna go right click and we're gonna go add node and we're gonna go output. And we're gonna name this one RMA, RMA. And just like before in Substance Painter where we had to map uh, you know, the, the red, green, and blue channels, we're gonna need to do that here in Substance Designer as well. So let's jump in and just take a look at what we have to do. Okay, so on this RMA node, what we're gonna need to do is add a RGBA merge node just before it. So we're gonna go ahead and hit space, and we're gonna type in RGBA, and we're gonna grab this RGBA merge node, okay? And that's gonna give us the ability to do more or less what we did in Substance Painter, okay? So let's go ahead and connect this RGBA merge to the RMA output. And now all we have to do is, just like before, we have the red channel, the green channel, and the blue channel. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the output, so if we were to follow this string from the ambient occlusion, right, we're gonna go ahead and follow that to this B channel. And now we're gonna take our metallic, or our roughness channel, let's find that one. So here's our roughness, so we're just gonna trace that one step back, and we're gonna change that into the red channel. And now we just need the metallic, and to map that to our G channel, okay? So now we've got roughness mapping to the red, metallic mapping to the green, and ambient occlusion mapping to the blue, okay? So that's pretty much all we're gonna need, and that's all feeding into this RMA material output, okay? So now we've got all the outputs we need, and this is actually kind of convenient because if you're gonna use the standard shader, you're gonna use these. But if you're gonna use the RMA material, you're gonna use these, okay? So there you pretty much have it. If you wanna also create a emissive channel, you're just gonna go ahead and go right click, add node, and output. And you'll just map whatever your emissive channel is directly to this, okay? So this will be your emissive, and we can call that emissive. And that would be our emissive channel. So this would this would be what we would use for our emissive. Now in our export, when we go to export outputs, we can go ahead and select which of these outputs we want to use. So we can go uh, and turn off the roughness, we can turn off the metallic, and we can turn off the AO. Since we don't have an emissive channel on our tile floor, we can go ahead and turn off the emissive channel as well. But if we did have an emissive channel, all you'd have to do is select it and it would work, okay? So once you do that, you're just gonna go ahead and select where you wanna output this to. So we'll go jobs, gong, game ready, materials, and select the folder. And here we can see that it's gonna be called the graph underscore identifier. So it's gonna be gong floor 
underscore RMA or underscore base color or underscore normal. So this is actually going to do our naming conventions for us as well. All right. So all we have to do now is hit save all and jump into Maya LT. And now we can go ahead and grab the maps. So let's grab our gong floor underscore normal, our gong floor underscore color. and our gong floor underscore RMA. Okay, and now our floor is all set. Okay, so now once again, all we have to do is go file, export selection. And this time we're gonna to wanna to make sure that that version is correct. So let's go ahead and put it into the 2016-17 again and name it gong floor or overwrite the gong floor. Hit export selection and go into sub, uh, our Stingray. Inside of Stingray, all we have to do is go Import, navigate to our folder, Gong, Game Ready, Gong Floor, Import, wait for the compiling to complete, grab the Gong Floor, place, and center it. So. Zero, zero, zero. And as you can see, we are now fully prepared for use in Stingray. And that pretty much does it, okay? So that should show you the entire process from either Substance Painter or Substance Designer uh, and how to work with Stingray uh, in a very efficient fashion, okay? So I hope you learned a lot from this tutorial. And I hope this answers all your questions. If not, feel free to you know, ask any questions you want in the comments section below um, or on the Autodesk forums. Uh, thank you so much for watching, and I hope this was really helpful to you. All right, so have a great day, and I'll see you in the next tutorial.